in partnership with the Capital Area Council of Governments, with the guidance of Hayes County Emergency Services, adapted by the Texas State University Institute for Government Innovation, and based on materials created by the I Love You Guys Foundation. On September 27, 2006, a gunman entered Platt Canyon High School in Bailey, Colorado. He held seven girls hostage and ultimately shot and killed Emily Keyes. During the time she was held hostage, Emily sent her parents text messages. Emily's kindness, spirit, fierce joy, and the dignity and grace that followed this tragic event define the core of the I Love You Guys Foundation, which was started by her parents. Peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. This is the Standard Response Protocol. Hello, everybody. I'm Mr. Teacher. Welcome to my classroom. Today, we're going to spend some time learning about how to stay safe during an emergency. Maybe you've seen this poster around the school. We're going to talk about what those four symbols on it mean. Schools across the country are using them to make sure students, teachers, and staff are safe during an emergency. Each symbol has an action that goes along with it, and we teach the same actions to police, firefighters, other emergency responders, teachers, and staff. And today, I'll be teaching you about them. This way, if an emergency happens at your school, everyone will know what to do. It's also important to talk to your parents about what you learn in this class. Just so you know what we're talking about, this training is called the Standard Response Protocol. It's also sometimes called the SRP. The Standard Response Protocol is based on four actions we take during different types of emergencies. Lockout, Lockdown, Evacuate, and Shelter. In an emergency, the action will be announced on the intercom or PA system and each action will be repeated with some additional instructions. Now, this only works if the intercom works, so let school staff know if you're in a room where the intercom doesn't work. Let's hear some examples. Mr. Robot, could you please help me out with the examples? Sure thing, Teach. Just let me know what example you'd like me to give. I hope you'll all welcome my instructional aide, Mr. Robot. He does excellent impersonations. The first one we'll try is lockout. The lockout announcement is always the same, and it is repeated to make sure everyone has a chance to hear it. Can you do that one for me, Mr. Robot? Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout is used to keep students and staff safe within the building. Okay. The next one is lockdown. It is also the same every time. Let's hear it, Mr. Robot. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown is the action to keep quiet and safe in individual rooms. Okay, so this next one is a little different. The action name is always the same, but a location will be announced after the action to tell you where to go. Mr. Robot, can you give me an example where everyone needs to go to the gym? Evacuate. To the gym. Evacuate. To the gym. Evacuate is used to move students from one location to another, in or out of the building. And remember, the location will be a part of the announcement. We have one more action to go. This one is like evacuate. The announcement will change depending on the situation. The danger will be announced, and the way to stay safe comes right after it. So, Mr. Robot, can you give me an example of the shelter announcement? Shelter for tornado. Drop, cover, and hold. Shelter for tornado. Drop, cover, and hold. Shelter is used for group and self-protection. Remember, the danger and way to stay safe will be included in the announcement. Thank you, Mr. Robot. Feel free to plug yourself in and recharge. I'll let you know when I need your help again. You should be aware that some school emergencies involve response from law enforcement. Your school works with local law enforcement and emergency services to coordinate their expectations and actions. Many times, an incident command post will be created. This is a place where a group of first responders and school district officials will come together during an emergency. All major decisions will be made at the command post and relayed to people working at the emergency. Because safety is so important, 
The next thing I'm going to do is give you the basics. I'll tell you what students and teachers do when each of these announcements are made. After that, we'll get into the details and wrap up. So you understand the basics, I'm going to tell you what both students and teachers should do when you hear each of the four actions. Lockout, lockdown, evacuate, and shelter. For lockout, secure the perimeter. Students get inside the building and continue with their normal school day activities. Teachers help students and staff get inside the building, take role, and go about business as usual. For lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. Students stay in their classrooms, get out of sight, and remain silent. Teachers lock the classroom door, turn out the lights, get out of sight, and also remain silent. They do not open the door and they take role silently. For evacuate, remember, the location will be mentioned in the announcement. Students leave their stuff behind and quickly and quietly move to the announced location. Teachers take a roll sheet if possible, lead students to the evacuation location, and take roll. For shelter, it depends on the hazard and strategy. Remember, these will be included in the announcement. Some hazards might include tornadoes or flooding. Some safety strategies may be drop, cover, and hold, or get to high ground. Students need to be trained in hazards and safety strategies. I'll talk more about these later in this video. Teachers also need to be trained in hazards and safety strategies. Before we get into the details, I want to mention the very important differences between lockout and lockdown. Lockout is when the danger is outside of the building. This one is a little easier to remember because of the word out. Lock out means danger is outside. After securing the perimeter, lockout is business as usual. Lockdown is when there's danger inside the building. If it helps, the word lockdown ends in an in, and the danger is in the building. Lockdown is locks, lights, and out of sight. To more fully explain the SRP, I will go through each symbol and start with how they are announced, what the announcement means, and give some examples. Finally, I'll tell you what students and teachers are supposed to do, then answer some frequently asked questions. Let's start with lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Remember, lockout is danger outside the building. It might be criminal activity, or a peaceful or violent protest, or a dangerous animal outside. Here's what happens. School staff and teachers will lock all outside doors. No one is allowed in or out. Don't forget about students, teachers, or staff who are outside. How will they be notified? Make sure your school has a plan. Is it walkie-talkies? An outdoor PA system? You may need to send a messenger to run to students and staff and direct them to return inside immediately. In a lockout, students get in the building. For the most part, students will continue with normal classroom activities inside the building. But if a lockout lasts into recess or lunch, it is still no one in or out. So, everyone stays in the building. Same thing is true at the end of the school day. What about teachers? What do they do? First, they bring students inside. If there are exterior doors in the classroom, they make sure they're locked. Pre-planning is critical. Have a plan that makes sure all exterior doors are locked and that a redundant system is in place for those days teachers are absent or are not in their normal area. It is recommended that each exterior door has a minimum of three people assigned to it to confirm that the door is locked. Teachers may also need to check if nearby exterior doors are propped open. Then, teachers need to take attendance and note the time attendance was taken. Finally, teachers also increase their situational awareness. You know, be extra alert and watchful. Other than that, it is business as usual. I think a video might help. Mr. Robot, could you please show everyone the lockout video? Of course, Mr. Teacher. Lockouts are typically called for by law enforcement officials. Hi, this is Evan with the Broomfield Police Department. Or district personnel. A lockout. Okay, thank you for the information. Bye-bye. Attention students, we're in lockout. Secure the perimeter. 
Lockout. Secure the perimeter. The goals of a lockout are to get all students and staff inside the building. Guys, come on in. You need to get inside. Go up to the first classroom on the right. Hurry, 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 hurry. And then lock all exterior doors. In most cases of a lockout, it will be business as usual inside the school. However, in some cases, a lockdown may also be issued in conjunction with a lockout, particularly if the threat is near the school. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Robot. We've now come to our question and answer portion of the lesson. So, let's see if Mr. Robot has any questions from students we can try to answer. I have found five questions, Mr. Teacher. Perfect. Please read each question to me, and I'll answer them. Barry from Bastrop is up first. Um, could you tell me when a lockout might occur? Great question. The simple answer is that a lockout occurs when there is a threat or danger outside of the school. I mentioned some examples, but here are some more. A bank robbery. A high-speed chase. A suspicious person. Riots. Demonstrations. A child custody issue or even a fire in the neighborhood. Well, Barry, I hope that helps. Who's next, Mr. Robot? Next, we've got Belinda from Blanco. Um, who can call a lockout? Another good question. A lot of different people can call a lockout. A student can by reporting to school employees. A teacher can by reporting to the main office. A lot of times, the school receives the call from police to start the lockout. Who do we have next, Mr. Robot? Next up is Walter from Williamson County. What about glass changes? What happens during a lockout? This is an important question. Most of the time, you would change classes as usual. If your school has modular buildings, students and staff in these buildings may be brought into the main building during the lockout. But if a threat is very close to the school, the response may be to go into lockout and lockdown. Excuse me, Mr. Teacher, I have a question. Wonderful! A request for Mr. Robot. Well, the video I played earlier mentioned something you just mentioned that I don't understand. What's that? You said sometimes during a lockout, if the danger is very close to the school, the response may be to go into lockout and lockdown. What does that mean? Well, Mr. Robot, I should say I'm impressed. A lockout means we've locked exterior doors and everything else goes on normally. But if we are in lockout and the danger is very close to the school, we may go into a lockdown. That means the exterior doors are already locked. But instead of business as usual, we also do everything necessary for a lockdown. We'll learn more about a lockdown in the next part of our lesson. But for now, I'll remind you that a lockdown is locks, lights, out of sight. Thank you very much for that explanation, Mr. Teacher. Our next question comes from Brianna in Blanco. What happens if someone's parents are at the door during a lockout? Excellent question. During a lockout, doors should not be open for anyone but the first responders that are displaying the proper credentials, like a badge or something similar. After all, a parent could be the reason for the lockout. I think we have time for one more question, Mr. Robot. Okay. Our last question is from Trish in Travis County. Can we leave the school during a lockout? This is a great question to end our discussion of lockouts. To repeat Trish's question, she would like to know if you can leave the school during a lockout. The answer is, it depends on the situation. Lockout is called when there is something dangerous near the school. This means that even if the school day ends, you may have to stay in the building until the danger is gone. School staff will make the decision. Just remember, it is for your safety. Okay, great discussion everyone, and thank you for your questions. We'll talk in our next lesson about lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Okay, time for our next lesson. This time we'll be learning about lockdown. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown is called when there's a threat inside the school building. Maybe it's a crazy person, or maybe a non-custodial parent, or something worse. 
an armed intruder, or some other danger. Since the threat is inside the building during a lockdown, there's no need to lock any unlocked exterior doors. In fact, locking these doors may put staff unnecessarily at risk. This also allows quick and easy access of law enforcement into your building. During a lockdown, the focus will be on locking interior doors, like classroom doors. It is important to stay calm during a lockdown. An incident command post will be established and the danger will be handled. So, what should students do in lockdown? First, stay out of sight from any hallway windows. How do you know you're out of sight? If you can't see out the door window, then no one in the hallway can see you. Also, sit on the floor and get low. Think about where the safest place in your classroom would be. A safe place is behind a locked door and cannot be seen from the hallway. Your classroom may not be a good safe zone if the hallway wall is all windows. If you are in a room like this, it is recommended to relocate or have a procedure to block the view through those windows. Remember, pre-planning is vital. Be absolutely silent and put your phone on silent. A locked door is very protective. In active violence events, people behind a locked classroom door are rarely hurt. Do not open the door for anyone. Administrators and or law enforcement will unlock the door and help everyone out. And what about teachers? What should teachers do in a lockdown? Teachers should verify that not only the main classroom door, but all doors in the classroom are secured from the inside. When you hear, lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight, depending on what you see and hear, you might want to check the hallway for students. If the threat is close to your classroom, focus on getting the door locked and closed as quickly as possible. A locked classroom door is a proven lifesaver. Turn out the lights. Usually, there is no need to raise or lower the outside window shades because the threat is inside the building. The goal is to get out of sight behind a locked door as quickly as possible. Leave hallway door windows uncovered. Law enforcement needs to see into the room from the hallway. Science rooms often have two doors with corridor windows, making it difficult to get out of sight. In this case, it may be beneficial to cover one of the corridor windows. Do not slide red or green cards or any other information under the door. There are two reasons. First, law enforcement won't believe the message until they have verified the status of the classroom. Second, you are giving too much information to the bad guy. Be silent and maintain student silence. Put your phone on silent. A lockdown cannot end with an announcement on the intercom or PA. It only ends with administration or law enforcement opening the door and helping everyone out of the room. If you can, take attendance. Note if you have missing students or extra students from the hallway. Note the time. You won't need to do anything with the roster at this point, but you're creating a chain of custody that will be useful through the event. Okay, Mr. Robot. I think I've been talking a little too long. Do you have a video you can share with everyone? I do, Mr. Teacher. I will play the lockdown video now. If you're in a classroom when a lockdown is called, the main thing to remember is locks, lights, out of sight. As students gather in a safe area of the room, lock the door and turn off all lights. Have everyone in the room move to a location that is out of sight. Pick an area of the room that can't be seen from interior windows. An actual lockdown may not be resolved for several hours. Here's how you should wait. Stay in the safe location. Don't move around the room. Remain silent. Staff, take written attendance of who is in the room. Note anyone missing and if you have any extra students or staff. Very helpful, Mr. Robot. I think you also have a video about what to do when a fire alarm goes off during a lockdown. Coming right up. If a fire alarm sounds, do not leave your safe location unless you are certain that a fire is threatening your room. If you are forced to evacuate due to a fire, keep in mind that the hall may not be your best escape route. Thank you, Mr. Robot. Also, remember earlier I told you sometimes law enforcement will be a part of the response? Well, sometimes during a lockdown, law enforcement will come to get us out of the building. Could you show us what that might look like, Mr. Robot? No problem, Mr. Teacher. When law enforcement begins the evacuation, here is what to expect. An officer will unlock your door and enter the room. 
Stay where you are. The officer will give you specific instructions you must follow. Springfield Police Department, you're safe, everything's okay, we're going to get you out of the building. I need everyone to follow my instructions. I need a single file line, leave all your personal property on the floor where it is, form me a single file line right here at the door. Teacher, I need you in front, please. You will be asked to leave your stuff behind, form a line at the door with the teacher in front. I need everyone to hold hands with the person to your right and left. Hold hands with the person in front of and behind you until you reach your right. final destination. Wait Keep quietly for further instructions from the officer. Teacher, I need you to walk out, follow the instructions of that officer right there. Go ahead. You will be told to proceed to the next officer. Walk, do not run, and do not talk. Walk towards the stairs. Follow the directions the of the officers guiding you during the evacuation. They could be Walk giving you stairs, verbal please. directions. Right to the stairs. Or hand signals. Watch the pace of your line. Be aware of obstacles such as corners, fallen objects, debris, or stairs which may affect the speed your line can move. Don't stop until you reach the location you were directed to. Keep moving all the way to the end of the fence. All the way to the end of the fence. Keep moving. Verify attendance and wait for further instructions. Okay. Connor. Here. Andrew. Here. One last thing to think about in the early moments of a lockdown is something we call self-evacuation. Mr. Robot, can you show us one more video, please? No problem, Mr. Teacher. Last one. During the initial moments of a school violence situation, the official call for a lockdown may not have occurred or not have been heard by everyone. You need to assess your personal safety. Consider your best option. This may include staying in a classroom behind a locked door, hiding, or evacuating. Self-evacuation, which means exiting the school and leaving the campus, is an option. If you're in a hallway, common area, or near an exterior door, self-evacuation may be your best choice. Once you've arrived at a safe location, you should immediately check in with your parents and the school district to let them know you're safe. Thank you again, Mr. Robot. Your videos were very helpful. At this point, I want to talk to you about something very serious. It is not officially part of the SRP, but it is an add-on that is important. It is called Avoid, Deny, Defend. During a lockdown, we use many of the principles of Avoid, Deny, Defend but it's important to understand them in a little more detail. Avoid. We do this in a lockdown by either going to a classroom and turning the lights off or self-evacuating. The idea here is to get away from the danger or avoid the danger if you can. Deny. We do this in a lockdown by locking the door. Sometimes we cannot lock a door. If we cannot lock the door or someone is trying to get into a locked door, we continue to deny. That means we block the door with anything we can find. A desk, a chair, anything. Once this is done, you should look at your situation again and see if there are other ways out of the room like exterior windows, a door connecting to another classroom, or something else. Defend. We have not talked about this yet in a lockdown, but sometimes in a dangerous situation. If we have tried to avoid the danger, but it did not work, and we tried to deny an intruder, and that did not work, we will be left with only one option, to defend ourselves and others. If an intruder tries to break through a doorway you have blocked, they will probably struggle for a moment. This is most likely your best opportunity to attack the intruder. Use anything you can as a weapon. A chair leg, a rock, a bookend, spraying a fire extinguisher, anything. Try to work with others who are old enough to control the intruder's body and any weapons they may have. These are very difficult things to talk about and think about, but remember that planning will keep you safer and more prepared. And always remember, police are only minutes or even seconds away. So don't forget during a lockdown, we are avoiding, denying, and defending. I know I've covered a lot of information. Mr. Robot, I bet there are some student questions. Thank you for handling that difficult subject, Mr. Teacher. Our first question is from Callie in Caldwell County. I'm confused about lockout and lockdown. What's the difference? This is such an important question. Lockout is when the danger is outside the building. This one is a little easier to remember because of the word out. Lockout means danger is outside. After securing the perimeter, lockout is business as usual. 
Locked down is when there's danger inside the building. If it helps, the word lockdown ends in an N, and the danger is in the building. Lockdown is locks, lights, out of sight. Would you like to hear the next question, Mr. Teacher? Yes, please. Okay, a question from Larissa in Lano. During a lockdown, when should we finally open the classroom door? Thank you for asking that, Larissa. Once that door is closed and locked, it should remain closed and locked. Either a school administrator or an emergency responder will have a key and will open the door and give you directions to follow. Next up, we've got Bo from Burnett. Should I call 911 with information? If you think the information is important, like the intruder is outside your room, you have a clothing description of them, or you know who they are, you can call. Too many calls, though, can overload the system and possibly confuse police. Okay, this next one is from Larry of Lano County. What if you're outside during a lockdown? What should you do? Excellent question. If you're outside and a lockdown is called, do not go back into the building. Instead, go to a safe location. An example of a safe location may be another nearby school, a restaurant, your house, or a family member's house. Are there any more questions, Mr. Robot? I have four more questions. The next one is from Bernadette in Burnett County. What if there is no teacher around when a lockdown is announced? Another good question. So many smart students. If you can, get behind a locked door. If not, close the door and hide. Don't forget to block the door with any heavy objects you can find. You may also try to self-evacuate if the threat is not in your immediate area. We'll talk some more about this in our next lesson. Just make sure you take your personal safety into account. Who is next, Mr. Robot? Next up, we have Leslie from Lee County. What if you're in the hallway when the lockdown starts? Thank you for asking that. Remember that teachers check the halls quickly before they lock and turn the lights out. Get to a classroom, any classroom, as quickly as you can and lock down. If the classroom is already locked, then find a place to hide. Do not go from classroom to classroom. Self-evacuating may be another option. Okay, Mr. Robot, I think we've got time for your next two questions. Who do we have first? Next up, we have Colin from Caldwell. I didn't understand the part about fire alarms. What do we do if the fire alarm goes off during a lockdown? If the fire alarm goes off during a lockdown, stay in the classroom unless you see fire or if smoke is filling your classroom. If you must evacuate due to a fire or smoke, the hallway may not be your best option. Consider using an alternate door, window, or any other exterior exit. Okay. Next question, Mr. Robot. Sure. This last one comes from Hank in Hayes County. Can we text our parents during the lockdown? This is a very common question, and I appreciate you asking it so I can explain. It is okay to send text messages to your parents or police, but you must silence your phone. Do not send messages to other people in the building. They could be detected and get them unwanted attention. It is not okay to use the internet. First responders may need internet to do their jobs, and you do not want to slow them down. I hadn't thought of that, Mr. Teacher. I'll be sure to turn off all my lights during a lockdown, too. That's right, Mr. Robot. Computer monitors and robots also need to be turned off to make sure the room looks empty. That is all we have for lockdown. Thank you, everyone, for your attention and respect during these very important lessons. Okay, we're on to our third lesson. This one is about evacuate. Remember that this announcement is a little different from our last two because it changes depending on the situation. Mr. Robot, can you give us an example where we are supposed to evacuate to the bus zone? Evacuate to the bus zone. Evacuate to the bus zone. Excellent. Thank you. So, evacuate is how we move in an orderly fashion from point A to point B. If you think about it, a fire drill is really just evacuate out of the building. Let's start with what students should do during an evacuation. For students, an evacuation is pretty simple. Leave your stuff behind. If your phone is in your pocket, bring it. If it's in your purse or backpack, you may not be given the opportunity to grab it. It is very important to follow the evacuate directions exactly. For example, students may be told to form a single file line 
and hold hands with the person in front of them and behind them. Sometimes what to do with your hands will be announced to you. Evacuate to the flagpole hand in hand or evacuate to the gym hands on head. Just be sure you are ready to follow specific instructions given to you and be aware. You may be given additional instructions during the evacuation. Teachers, there may be cases where you lead students and some where you follow students out. There may be circumstances where you can't bring your purse, briefcase, or backpack. Try to bring your keys, wallet, and phone. At the evacuation assembly area, take attendance and note the time. Both students and teachers need to remember what we learned about in lockdown. Sometimes, during an active violence event, it is an option to self-evacuate. You need to assess your personal safety and consider your best option. Self-evacuation which means exiting the school and leaving the campus, is an option. If you self-evacuate, it's probably better to leave most of your stuff behind so you can move more quickly. Once you've arrived at a safe location, you should immediately check in with your parents and the school district to let them know you are safe. It's always important to keep your hands visible to police officers who will be on high alert. In other situations, just like we talked about during lockdown, the police may lead the evacuation. In a police-led evacuation, Teachers will probably be asked to lead the students. Don't be surprised if the officers are loud and demanding. They may not know everything about the incident yet and need to make sure they are heard. They will give direct instructions that you should follow. Again, be sure to keep your hands visible. As a special note for teachers, if a police-led evacuation is part of a lockdown and you were able to take attendance during the lockdown, check attendance again at the evacuation site and compare it to the attendance you took during the lockdown. Okay, we have now covered evacuate and two special types of evacuation, self-evacuation and police-led evacuation. I imagine we have some questions, Mr. Robot, because that was a lot. Please read our first question. Sure, Mr. Teacher. Our first question is from Fernando in Fayette County. During an evacuation, do I have permission to self-evacuate? Well, Fernando, that is an excellent question, but the answer is a little complicated. If the evacuation started with the evacuate announcement, it's probably not appropriate to self-evacuate. If the announcement started with a lockdown, it may be appropriate to self-evacuate. But you must pay very close attention to the situation. Do you know where the danger is? Can you see the exit? Is it away from the threat, noise, or commotion? Remember, a locked door is a proven lifesaver. It is also important to say that for teachers, it is the same answer. But don't leave the students. Okay, Mr. Robot, next question, please. Our next question comes from Bethany in Bastrop. So my question is like Fernando's. If someone does self-evacuate, where do they go? Great follow-up question. If you self-evacuate, you should go to another nearby school, a nearby business, a recreational center, a friend's house, your house, or a family member's house. When you arrive safely, be sure to let your parents and the school or school district know. Our next questions are all about police-led evacuations. Our next question is from Miss Rabbit in Hayes County. Miss Rabbit, my favorite teacher! When a police-led evacuation is starting, if I hear a knock on the door like, knock, knock, police, open up, should I open the door for them? Wonderful question, Miss Rabbit. I'm so glad you asked. If you are in a lockdown, don't open the door for anyone, not even if someone knocks and says they are police. Someone might just be pretending to be a police officer. Police or school staff will be able to unlock the door and get into the classroom without your help. You just stay safe and quiet and follow their instructions once they are in the classroom. Thank you again, Miss Rabbit. It is always nice to hear from you. Do you have any more questions from students about police-led evacuations? Yes, this next question is from Haley at Hayes County. During a police-led evacuation, what can you take with you? Good question, Haley. It's unlikely that you will be able to bring your backpack. You may not even be able to get into it once police enter the room. But if you can, bring your phone, wallet, and keys. I think we have time for two more questions. Great, Mr. Teacher. This one is from Wilma in Williamson County. I think you said we need to keep our hands visible during a police-led evacuation. Why do we keep our hands visible? Great question. 
You are obviously listening closely. Thank you for that. Law enforcement officers are trained to look at hands for dangerous objects, so keep them visible. They may ask you to evacuate hand in hand or with your hands on your head. Just make sure you're listening to their instructions and that you follow them exactly. Our last question comes from Tomas in Travis County. I just have a general question. What will police do in a police-led evacuation? Thank you, Tomas. That is a great place to end our evacuation discussion. Remember that the police may be loud and demanding and they will give you instructions. Make sure you follow those instructions. In some cases, when you have reached the final evacuation location, officers will want to verify that students aren't in any further danger. To help with this, they may search students and staff for any potentially dangerous items. Since we have covered all the evacuate material, I'd also like to mention a new concept we call reunification. This is the process for reuniting students with their parents after an evacuation to somewhere away from the school. The I Love You Guys Foundation has created something called the Standard Reunification Method that your school should also teach you about. Okay, we've made it to our last lesson, shelter. For shelter, the announcement you hear will depend on the type of hazard you are sheltering from and what strategy to use. Let's start with understanding what a hazard is. It's a dangerous situation. Some are environmental, like tornadoes or flooding. Some are hazardous materials, or hazmat for short like a chemical spill nearby. Your safety strategy is what you do in response to the hazard to stay safe. Some safety strategies may be drop, cover, and hold, or get to high ground. The announcement will depend on the hazard and safety strategy. Could you give us an example, Mr. Robot? Shelter for tornado. Drop, cover, and hold. Shelter for tornado. Drop, cover, and hold. What's most important during a shelter announcement is to listen for instructions. The situation may be very dynamic. Always be ready for the unexpected. During a shelter event, teachers will need to do the same things as students. Teachers also need to take attendance and note the time. Do we have any questions, Mr. Robot? That's all I have to share about shelter. We sure do, Mr. Teacher. Our first one comes from Lindsay in Lee County. Could you please give us another example of a shelter announcement? Sure. Shel- <coughs> okay, okay. I thought I'd try it. Shelter for flooding. Get to high ground. Shelter for flooding. Get to high ground. Excellent, Mr. Robot. Any more questions? Yes, we have a question from Felicia in Fayette County. You mentioned hazardous materials. What does that announcement sound like? I'll handle this one. Shelter for hazmat. Seal the room. Shelter for hazmat. Seal the room. Excellent, Mr. Robot. Can I ask you a question? Please. What do you think that means? Seal the room? Well, I believe air ducts, doors, and windows will need to be sealed to prevent hazardous materials from entering. That's exactly right! I'd like to thank everyone again for their wonderful questions and their attention in these lessons. To help you remember, we taught you what the four symbols on this poster mean. Lock out, lock down, evacuate, and shelter. And we've taught you what to do when each one is announced so that everyone knows how to react to an emergency, including teachers, staff, students, and even first responders during any emergency here at school. What's even more important about the SRP information we've shared with you today is that it should start a conversation. Teachers and students who have seen this video may have even more questions that they would like to ask and pre-planning that they would like to do. We encourage those conversations and that pre-planning. We have a printout we would like for you to take home tonight and tell your parents about what we've talked to you about today. Please continue talking, continue planning, keep asking questions, and stay safe.